If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, we want to talk about God's holy word. God's holy word. And folks, I love the Gideon ministry, but I'm telling you, I love the word of God. God's word is truth, folks. Uh, God wor- God's word changes lives. Uh, God's word, uh, it's, it's our lifeline. God's word is a love letter from God himself. The Holy Spirit in- inspired men to write this. And we can never take and should never take the word of God lightly. There are countries that you cannot possess a Bible. You cannot carry one around in public. You cannot read it, uh, you know, out loud. And, and people are really, they are punished for doing these things. And even in some countries, it could call, cause them uh, to their life, cost them their lives. So we in America, we are blessed that any day that we want to go out to a street corner and we want to take a Gideon Bible or any Bible with us, we can witness to them and we can give them a copy of God's holy word. I am still so proud. I am so glad to live in the United States of America. God's holy word. Three things I want you to see if you have a bulletin. Number one, God's word is light. God's Word is light. Folks, we need light. Wouldn't you hate to stand around in the dark all the time? But folks, there are people in darkness every day. There are people that are being brainwashed by things that are not true. God's Word is true. Number two, God's Word is light. God's Word directs our steps. You want to know what to do as a Christian? Get into God's Word. Read God's Word. Study God's Word. The biggest mistake Christians make in reading God's Word is you do it and see how fast you can get it done. Take your time in God's Word. Let God's Word direct your steps. Number three, God's Word teaches us truth. Folks, there are so many lies out there. There are so many people lying about so many things. But when we read the Word of God, it is the same. The Bible said yesterday, today, and for years to come. Matter of fact, we will read Scripture that says God's Word is eternal. It will live forever. Live forever. So let's look at these three reasons why God's Word is so important. And let's start in uh, chapter 119 and 129. Your testimonies are wonderful. He is talking about the Word of God, the testimonies of God. And it's not just wonderful. The Bible is awesome. It is beautiful. It is perfect. It is practical. It is powerful. Folks, God's Word can take a drunk, a drunk, and and sober them up and and let them understand that they needed Jesus Christ more than anything. An alcoholic, a drug guy, some people on drugs. God's Word can change their life. The Bible tells us it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The entrance of your words give light. Folks, light is so important. If the sun didn't shine, our plants would not grow. The breathing process of oxygen, all this has to have light. I believe Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. That was physical light. But the Bible is spiritual light. Satan is everywhere. Satan is influencing so many people. And the way we can know right from wrong, number one, get saved. Get, ask Christ to come into your life and the Holy Spirit will help you. But I am telling you, the Word of God is light. Look over just the next page back. Verse 105, your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We need lamps to light up, light up things around us. We need light 
on pathway so we can see the pathway that we are on so that we can follow God with all of our heart, our soul, our minds, and our bodies. So it is light. Verse, the, the rest of verse 130, I opened my mouth and panted and longed for your commandments. When someone pants, they are thirsty, folks. And I'm telling you, just as Jesus saw the woman at the well, we can have living water. We can, our thirst can be quenched. Everything that we see, we see in Jesus Christ. And that is so, so important. Psalm 19, go with me there. We're going to see a lot of Scripture in a short amount of time. So you listen fast, and I'll go fast, all right? <laughs> Psalm 19, verse 7. Six things, six attributes of the Word of God. The Word of God is perfect. It is sure. It is right. It is pure, it is clean, and it is true. You will see this in the first three verses. The law of the Lord is perfect. Folks, I don't know anything in this world that's perfect. Jesus was perfect and lived in the world, and we crucified him. The Bible is perfect. There are no mistakes. There are no contradictions. People have tried and tried to misprove the Word of God. And folks, I am telling you, it is perfect. It is flawless. Converting the soul. Oh, folks, I am telling you, there's two things to be saved. You must hear the Word of God. Someone needs to share the gospel, or they did share the gospel with you. And then the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and I am telling you, the light comes on, and you see your need for a Savior. So the Word is converting the soul, and it is perfect. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making, uh, making wise the simple. Folks, I am telling you, God is sure about everything. God's Word is sure. We shouldn't doubt it. We should trust it. And when it talks about making the wise simple, I'll give you an example just today. Zyla in the baptistry, six years old. And the Bible says, if you have the faith of a child, you can be saved. Oh, folks, I thank God for the Word of God. It's perfect. It's sure. The statutes of the Lord are right. They are right. Folks, there is so much wrong in this world. There are so many people telling us, right from wrong. But I'm telling you, Satan is having a heyday. His job is to make right wrong and wrong right. And how do we know? How do we know? We know it from the Word of God. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt not steal. It makes us wise, folks. The commandment is of the Lord is pure enlightening the eyes. Oh, folks, we need our eyes open. We need to, uh, you know, open the Word of God and let it just pour into our hearts and into our souls. I know because uh, in preparing, uh, again, uh, starting last week, three sermons a week, folks, I am in the Word every day, every morning from 8 to 12 I'm in the Word. And folks, I am telling you, that's how you learn the Word. That's how the Word of God changes you. We can't be casual readers. Casual readers make casual Christians. And we need the Word to enlighten us. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean. The Word of God is clean, enduring forever forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous, more to be desired than they are of gold, yea, than fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. And folks, the Word of God should be sweet to us. Lori and I have date night every Thursday, and I hadn't been to a restaurant in a while. And I'm telling you, I sat down Thursday night, and they put in front of me a hot croissant with honey butter. 
and a war was going on in my body. <laughs> yes, I gave in. <laughs> I ate that first bite. Oh my goodness. Folks, that's the way the Word of God should be to us. That you can't wait. You can't wait to get into the Word. It is like honey to us. Moreover, by them, your servants is worn, and keeping them, there is reward. Oh, folks, God's Word is light. It gives us understanding. We should have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. Not only is God's Word light, God's Word directs our step directs our step. Look back in our Scripture. Verse 132, Look upon me and be merciful to me, as your custom is to those who love your name. Folks, I am telling you, God looks after you. God speaks to you through the Word of God and through His Spirit. Through His Spirit. It is so important. And look at 133, Direct my steps by your Word. I am telling you, the Word of God is an instruction book. When, we, when, when Jonathan was just a kid, we had the bright idea to buy him a swing set when he was about five years old. And there were so many parts, and I told Lori, ah, just let me take care of it. I can do this. <laughs> Two hours later, I go in the house and I said, honey, can you help me with the swing set? <laughs> it's our instruction booklet. Folks, it tells us how to live. It tells us how to act. It tells us what to say. It tells us where we need to go. It tells us where we don't need to go. It tells us what we need to watch. It tells us what we don't need to watch. Folks, there's just too much junk out there. Direct my steps by your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Here's what I found out, folks. The more time you spend in the Word of God, the less likely you are to sin. Sin, I, I, just, I, I just believe that with all my heart. When you read the Word of God and you comprehend the Word of God, when that sin tempts you, you are going to remember what? You read. Verse 134, redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon uh, your servant and teach me your statues. Rivers of water run down from my eyes because men do not keep your law. And folks, we saw that this week in. And I tell you what else he's talking about. He's talking about the lostness of mankind. I remember growing up, and I remember revivals that we would extend because so many people were getting saved. I remember when I was a kid, people would come to the altar, and they would literally weep over family members and people that were lost. And folks, we've lost that because we are not spending enough time in the Word of God. We should be in awe of God's holy word. Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, look at this. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Folks, that's the word of God. It will direct your steps. It will help you. It will give you instructions. You find the will of God in the Word of God. You can pray Scripture, folks. The Word of God is so, so important. Psalm 119, verse 1. Go back to Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are the undefiled. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. Folks, that's why we call it a quiet time. We need to turn off our devices. We need to get in a quiet place and a quiet room and spend time with God in his word. 
Verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were, were directed to keep your statutes. Oh, folks, that is what the Word of God does. It directs our steps. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Folks, sin will keep you from reading the Word of God, and the Bible will keep you from sin. We have to make a choice. And I know what people say. I've heard this so much. Time, time, time. Folks, we all have the same amount of time in a week's time. I believe it's 168 hours in a week. And here's what I say. If you are too busy to read God's holy word and study God's word, you're too busy. Something needs to change in your life. The word of God is life. Wonderful words of life. It will change you. Then the Bible says, not only does God's word direct our steps, but the last thing I want to share with you, God's Word teaches us truth. Look back in our text. Psalm 119, verse 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. Your testimonies, which you have commanded, are righteous and very faithful. My zeal has consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten your works. Oh, folks, I remember the days when you could leave your doors unlocked at night. I remember going out to my, my grandparents who lived in the country in my grandfather's pickup truck. He never took the keys out of his truck. I remember the days when we could go out after dark and not have a fear for our lives. I remember the days when men would open doors for ladies, and kids would say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. I remember the days when right was right and wrong was wrong. And we have lost that because we are not spending time in the Word of God. Folks, I am telling you, Satan is having a heyday. We need to be ground, grounded in the Word of God. Verse 139, my zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure. What does that mean? What does the, what, what's the title of the Bible? The Holy Bible. God's holy word. Folks, I'm telling you, memorizing Scripture helps you you need to have these scriptures in your minds. That way when Satan comes at you, you can just start quoting scripture. And you will not give in to that temptation. Jesus himself did it. Started his ministry with the temptation of Satan himself. See, Satan don't mess with us. All right, he can only be at one place at one time, but there's demonic, uh, you, know, you know, things there. Demonic spirits all around us. When you feel that spirit, that demonic, that oppression, man, if you just start spitting out Scripture, I'm telling you, those feelings go away. The Bible says, what shall I say then? Shall I continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can I, that am dead to sin, live any longer therein? And you know how God made you? Where you can't think two thoughts at once. You can't. You can try. But if you are thinking about God's Word, if you have God's Word memorized, I am telling you, Satan will flee. Verse 141, I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. God's Word teaches us truth. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me. 
Folks, life's tough. Life's tough. Life's unfair. Cancer's everywhere. Crazy people are everywhere. That's why we need the time in God's holy word. It is calming. It is soothing. It is righteous. Yet your commandments are my delights. The righteous of your testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Psalm 119, verse 33. Psalm 119, verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statues, and I shall keep it to the end. Folks, never quit learning. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many degrees that you have. You need to learn. You need to keep learning. You need to stay sharp in the Word of God. Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. And folks, understanding is discernment. Ask God, what is your will for my life? What should I do in this instance? Give me understanding and I will keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Folks, I'm telling you, if you are full of Jesus and full of his words, you can't sit and watch some of the programs that you are watching. You will come under conviction. Conviction. And there's this battle in us all the time. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach which I dread, for your judgments are good. I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Oh, folks, we all need to be revived. Let me ask you a question. Are you as excited about God as you were two years ago? Are you as excited? Folks, we need revival in America. We need revival in Fort Smith. And revival begins in me. In me. We can have revival. We don't even have to schedule a revival to have revival. And that's one of the reasons you'll know it's revival. Because you didn't schedule it. God looked at our hearts. God looked at what we are hungry for. God looked, and folks, we are so distracted by other things. And we need to look into the face of God. In the last scripture, Psalm 119, 162, I close with this. I rejoice at your word as the one who finds great treasure. Great treasure. I hate and abhor lying. I love your law. Would you try this this week? Here's a challenge. Seven times a day, I will praise you. Do you not think our world would be different if the Christians seven times a day praise God for something in, in their lives because of your righteous judgment? Look at this. Great peace have those who love your law. You looking for peace? Number one, you need to know the Prince of Peace. That is Jesus Christ. Number two, you need to look in his word. I'm not afraid to die, folks. I'm not. I have the peace that passes all understanding. I don't want to die. I'd like to work a little longer. I love my family. I love my church. I love to go out on my motorcycle. <laughs> but I'm not staying here for that, folks. <laughs> and when Jesus calls me home, peace will come across me like peace I have never had in my life. And nothing causes them to stumble. Lord, I hope for your salvation and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and your testimonies. All my ways are before you. Folks, the more you read God's word, the more sensitive you will be to sin. When you 
feel it when that, hey, the Holy Spirit says, hey, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't do that. I'm telling you, if you will fall in love with the Word again. And I believe with all my heart, folks, Satan wants to keep us so busy that we don't have time for the Word of God. Father, thank You for this day. God, thank You for the Word of God. I thank You for the Gideon ministry. God, I just I love what they do. And God, we will only know in eternity the effect the Gideon ministry had and the monies that we give. I do believe we are going to see people in heaven that will say thank you. Thank you for giving. You purchased this Bible for me and I got saved. So God, I pray we would invest in the Word of God. But God, I pray even as the piano is playing, God, I pray for every Christian in this building. God, I pray that we would have clean hands and we would have clean hearts and we'd have clean minds. God, I know the Word of God speaks to us. So God, I pray we would make it a point. Read the Word every day this week and praise God, praise the Lord seven times every day. God, if there's one here that doesn't know you, God, they are missing the greatest thing in life. They are missing the one that can change their life and give them peace. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would take that. And God, I pray that seed that is planted, that they would come down front and just talk to us and let us share the gospel with them. And God, I pray for Christians. I pray that some would come to this altar and just renew their commitment to Christ. And if others need to follow you in baptism or even join the church, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would tell them, today is the day. So God, be with us. This is your invitation. This is your time. This is the most important time of the service. So God, help us to stay focused. Help us to look into your face. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. And God, if we need to change, God, I pray we would. And God, we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?